If you or someone you know has diabetes, you may have built up an extra supply of test strips and lancets. That's where we come in. We'll buy the supplies that you don't need and resell them to those in need to prevent waste. Help us make diabetes management more affordable. Visit us at teststripswithaz.com. All right, we have your boy Eric Anders back on the program. Two straight wins for Mr. Anders, picking up a win over Gerald Mearshart at UFC Tampa a couple weeks ago. Happy to have him back on the program. How are you, man? Man, doing awesome, man. Appreciate you having me. Absolutely. So we're a little about, about a week and a half removed from your win over Gerald Mearshart. Overall, how did you feel about your performance? Um, it was all right, man. You know, uh, got into a, uh, you know, I, I think it was a good fight. Uh, on both our parts, man, you know, uh, as other trying new things, uh, you know, uh, especially with kicking and stuff. So, um, I think you kind of, you don't always look as sharp when you're trying new things in, in a fight. So, you know, um, I was happy to go out there, compete well, get the win. Uh, but just want to try new things. What did you, what did you think of Gerald's approach to the fight? Cause you know, we had spoken before and I think a lot of people were in agreement that this is going to be a classic striker versus grappler matchup. He's going to try to take you to the ground. You were ready for that. You were ready for him to take you to the ground. You felt like you were very underrated off your back and on the ground. You had some, some tools as well. Were you surprised that he got in your face and, and wanted to trade with you for the majority of this fight? Um, man, you know, every player has a life and history of its own. So just cause he's shown the grappling in the past doesn't mean that you know, that was going to be his game plan. So, you know, um, I really didn't know what to expect. I didn't want to concentrate so much on the takedown defense that I neglected the, the striking and stuff. So I kind of just kind of do what I do in, in preparation for a fight and uh, just ready for whatever. You had mentioned you wanted to try some, some new things in this fight and you showed it with the kicking game and some other aspects. Why did you make that decision to, to take this particular fight in Tampa against Gerald Marichar to try to implement those tools? I mean, it was just a fight that came across. It's not like I picked Gerald. It's not like I picked Tampa. Uh, that's just the name that was brought to me. So, you know, of course, we said yes. And, you know, the, the, the goal is to always be constantly evolving and, and uh, changing. Um, so, you know, it was just the next fight. You know, I'm sure the next fight I'll, I'll try to use and develop different tools. Your last couple of fights were at 205. You made the return back to 185 for this fight. How did you feel getting back down to that weight? Obviously, you made the weight pretty easily in terms of getting on the scale and making it, but did you feel good getting back down there? Yeah, man. You know, uh, I thought I put on a whole lot of muscle for, uh, you know, to get ready to fight at 205 and whatnot. So, you know, I thought the weight could be much more difficult than it was, but it turns out that uh, it was actually the easiest one I've ever had. So, you know, um, I, I, you know, I'm not, not necessarily say struggle, but it's been, uh, you know, some close calls in terms of time and getting on a scale in the past. But man, I was on weight by like eight o'clock that morning. So, you know, uh, it's pretty good. What was different this time around, do you think? Man, I don't know. Uh, I did a lot of faster cardio, uh, probably a lot more running. Uh, so probably, you know, uh, cut some of that muscle as well. Were you surprised? Because you hit Gerald with some big shots in that first round. Were you surprised you didn't put him away? I know he's a, he's a very tough guy. He's very experienced. He's been in a ton of scraps. Were you surprised that he was able to to weather that storm? Nah, not really. You know, I mean, you know, of course the goal is to go out there and get a finish, pick up a bonus. Um, but, you know, I think that guy's had like 41 fights, and I think Thiago Santos is the only one that's ever finished him or TKO'd him or KO'd him anyway. So, you know, it just shows – you know, how durable he is, and, you know, um, I, I knew that, you know, it would be a, you know, it wouldn't be a quick one. When it went to the judges, how did you feel it was going to get scored? I mean, in the fight, obviously, you're, you're feeling like your hand was going to get raised. Were you confident that, that you had done enough to win that fight? Yeah, I was pretty confident. You know, I felt I had won the first and the third, and that he had won the second. Uh, and then going back and watching it now, uh, I still feel that way, so... You know, I do feel that the, uh, you know, the, it was the right decision. So there you go. It's another win for you. You're back two, two straight for you. You know, you got, you got plenty of options. You can go up to 205. You can stick around at 185. There, there's lots of things. Obviously, UFC Boston happened on Friday. Brendan Allen gets makes his debut, defeats Kevin Holland. You guys had fought before back in June of 2017. It was your last fight before you got the UFC call. Brendan calls you out. I mean, you just beat his teammate. You got a little bit of history there. He wants to get that one back. What did you make of that call? You know, every time he fights, he always talks about getting one of those wins back. 
You know, so that's like either me, Trevin Giles, or uh, Aaron Hernandez, I think his name is, um, Anthony Hernandez, yeah. whatever. Um, I think are his three on the losses. So, you know, I, I thought, I figured that he would pick one of those guys before he picked me, uh, you know, because you know, I didn't finish him, but I gave him hell, you know, more than he wanted for, you know, three of those five rounds. So, you know, whatever, you know, maybe Gerald, you know, maybe it feels like Gerald told him something that, you know, uh, is going to help him beat me or whatever. But uh, you know, I think history repeats itself if him and I fight each other again. You jumped on Twitter pretty, not too long after that and pretty much agreed to the fight there. Are you cool with that one? Is that, is that the one you think it's going to go down? You know, it's his first, he's only had one fight in the UFC. You've been here for a little while. Do you feel like that's the appropriate step forward after beating Gerald Mearshart? Um, no, nah, I mean, there's really no, no benefit for me other than, uh, you know, check, but you know, it is what it is, man. I enjoy fighting. And so if, if they want to run it, then, you know, I'm here to run it. So it is what it is. Do you want to get back in there again this year? You're one of the more active fighters on the roster. You don't like taking a lot of breaks. I think this is the longest, you know, space between fights you've had in your UFC career. Do you want to just sort of smell the roses for the rest of the year and take some time, or do you want to try to get another one in? Yeah. Um, man, I got hit a lot uh, against <laughs> Gerald, so I, mean, I want to take some time and heal. Um, so I'm probably done for the rest of the year if I get back in there uh, January, February time frame. Is it going to be at 85 or 205, or does it even matter? Uh, it doesn't matter to me, man. You know, if they ask me, I'm going to say 85, but... You know, if they come with a 205, then, you know, we're cool with that, too. Do you feel like your path to, you know, fighting for a belt, moving up the rankings is better at 205 or at 185? Or do you want to try to climb up both rankings? To be honest, I feel like I could do both, but I think my chances are best at middleweight. You've had just a, a really active, fun career, a lot of great finishes. You've had some, some great performances. You've had some tough performances, and you've learned and grown from all of those. As we get ready to head into 2020, what are some of the goals you have for yourself? You know, are you going to change things up in a way? Like you've been doing some traveling and visiting some different gyms. What kinds of things do you want to do in 2020? Yeah, man, I'll probably, you know, continue to, you know, cross train. Um, you know, just, you know, continue down the path that I'm on, man. You know, uh, I like to fight four times a year, so I like to go 4-0. and oh. I think that's the main thing, and I think a lot of doors are going to open up uh, if I can do that in 2020. People seem to be throwing your name around a lot. Who would you want to fight? Like, if the UFC called you up right now and said, like, what fight makes most sense for you? We'll make it happen. Realistically, where would you like to go with this thing? Uh, man, you know, maybe top 15. You know, I'm not really sure. I, it's been a while since I looked at the rankings. I know a lot of guys have moved and switched divisions and whatnot. So I'm not even sure where the rankings are. But, you know, the, at the end of the day, the goal is to be the champ. So... You know, eventually we're going to have to get in that top 10, that top 15, top 10, top 5, and then, you know, uh, fight the man for the belt. Your guy, Walt Harris, has a big fight coming up. We talked to him in Boston, had a lot of great things to say about you, obviously, and Charles Rose's performance. You know, what is it like watching his progression, what he's been able to do, getting ready to fight a guy like Alistair Overeem in a main event in Washington, D.C. later on this year? Man, it's really cool because, man, you know, he's the guy who kind of got me into MMA. And I've seen him in the UFC get cut from the UFC, come back, and now he's in, you know, top ten, getting ready to fight number seven. You know, he beats this guy. You know, he gets one of the top five guys, and then you know he's fighting for a belt. So he's right there on the cusp, and it's been really cool to see the, you know, the the progression of of his career. Have you thought? Have you guys had a conversation about like? motivating each other saying you know what like what's it going to be like when when i'm holding the heavyweight title you're holding the middle way the light heavyweight title have you thought about that have you been able to visualize that you guys both being champions both alabama guys at the same time uh um, man it's definitely on both our minds have we sat down and talked about it no but whenever we're in the gym training uh it is the motivation you know uh whether it's verbalized or not you know he knows my goals i know his goals so you know, we try to push each other to the next level. That's great. Eric Anders coming off his second straight win a little over a week and a half ago in Tampa. What a crazy card that was. Did you stick around and watch the rest of that? Oh, yeah, absolutely, man. You know, after every fight, uh, I sneak up, you know, from my wife and kids come. So I sneak up to the, you know, go sit in the stands with, with, uh, with them and, you know, enjoy the rest of the night as a fan. So, you know, it's cool. What was the cra- what was your what was your highlight moment of the night? What was what was kind of the craziest thing that, that you remembered seeing that kind of stuck out in your mind other than your fight, of course? 
man, Nico Price. <laughs> and uh, man, I wasn't actually in the stands. You know, he fought shortly after me. So we were, uh, you know, I was back there doing interviews, but they got TVs all over there backstage. So, you know, uh, I looked up as right as, his, uh, you know, watched the fight as I'm giving the interview and I pow, just, uh, you know, knocked out Nico. Uh, what's his name? James Tech Vick. Houston. Yeah, yeah, James Vick. And, uh, man, it's just exciting to watch that dude fight. Absolutely, and it's exciting to watch you fight as well. Looking forward to see what you bring our way in 2020. Eric Anders, your boy, back on the show. Before we let you go, man, let the folks know where they can find and follow you on the web, social media, any any shout-outs, anything else you want to get off your chest, man? The floor is yours. Yeah, man, you guys can get on me, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Matt, Eric Anders. Uh, Shout-out to uh, Magic Box, Conversation Club, uh, Rev Gear, and uh, Infinite CBD. Awesome, Eric. Thanks for joining again, and all the best to you, and uh, we'll see you back in 2020. I appreciate it, brother.